We open on Jono, fucking dead as a doornail. Oh, hold on a tick. Nap, still dead as a doornail. Oh, there's Ghost, being a useless wanker. Davos runs out in his PJs. Luckily, he hadn't brushed his teeth and gone to bed yet. The only decent bastards at Castle Black put Jono on a table and touch him gently. If only they had magical hands. Oh, there's a knock at the door. Hello, do you have bloody magical hands? Melisandre gives Jono a once-over. Some holes in the guts, no decapitation, that's good. Beard is in mint condition. Contractually obliged hairdo is fine. Okay, okay, I can work with this, you know. Alyssa Thorne is now Lord Commander and reminds everyone who still likes Jono that Jono's refugee policies were too loose. Everyone is then like, yeah, okay, I guess I do hate refugees. Well, they'll take our jobs. Fuck off, Ollie. Just fuck off. Ed is going to go talk to the wildlings about joining his fight club. Ramsay cares about the death of Miranda for about three seconds. His dad then reminds him that without Sansa, he's a bloody piece of shit. Theon learns the benefits of having no balls. Ice cold water, not a problem. Sansa, on the other hand, is freezing her vag off. A bunch of Ramsay's best men find Theon and Sansa, but Brienne cuts through them like butter with the help of fucking Podrick 2.0. It's then decided that they should form a super team. Fuck yes. Cersei skips along like a happy new woman, but after sensing the death of her daughter, yeah nah, she's gotta fuck some wankers up. Jamie seems fine with that too, and is like, yeah, fuck anyone who isn't us. The High Sparrow continues lecturing young people about their life choices and why they should have regrets. He's so bloody patronising. The Sand Snakes and Elia are still allowed in the TV show, and they unleash a series of very dishonourable, simple, backstabbing, no choreography required kills around dawn. Tyrion and Varys go down to ground level to figure out what the hell is wrong with Marine. There's homelessness, a religion outbreak, and a dash of arson at the Yacht Club. Meanwhile, Jorah the Explorer cops shit from Dario for being in Danny's friend zone while they search for her at a responsible leisurely pace. She's being held prisoner by a bunch of bizarro season one Dothraki doppelgangers. Over in Bravos, Arya is adapting to becoming Daredevil. She gets the shit kicked out of her by that cranky Sheila from the house of black and white. Alyssa Thorne tells Davos and the fellas if they keep guarding a corpse then by nightfall they're going to become corpses as well. It's finally admitted that the Red Woman could be handy in these corpse based scenarios. Ah, speak of the devil. Melisandre reveals her fun boobs but when she takes off her kinky choker it turns out those fun boobs are incredibly old boobs. Look, I'm not saying they're not fun anymore, I'm just not there yet. I'm not at a point in my life where I desire old boobs. In fact, I feel pretty fucking catfished by this whole reveal, to be honest. She's catfished Westeros and the bloody internet. Do you believe in magic in a young girl's heart? How the music can free her whenever it starts and it's magic. Uh, it's like a comfortable pair of shoes when Game of Thrones returns to the telly. You slip right back into them, they're so reliable. Definitely a few holes from wear and tear over the years, but they've taken you a long way and they are solid as fuck. This episode was solid as fuck. It feels like the show has taken a deep breath after season 5. I'm happy with the pacing in particular, uh, nothing too frenetic, but nothing too slow. Just setting up the pieces again, like a classic Thrones season opening episode. Look, the Jono stuff stands out a lot. I'm definitely not ready to let him go and I've never had a second doubt that he's gonna be resurrected. Until I see him burnt to ashes, I'm not letting go. Purely for the fact that there's been so much set up in the writing previously over the seasons, I won't go into it all, but I'm hanging on to the resurrection. A decent portion of the time code for this episode was spent around his corpse. I've never Never seen a group of blokes care more for a fucking corpse. It's like an elephant in the room. No one is asking, wait, why are we protecting a corpse so adamantly? Subconsciously, they still want a legitimate autopsy. I like the theory that Melisandre has taken years off of her life to give them to Jono. She's seen Jono in the flames walking along Winterfell, so whatever last ditch thing she can do to make that vision a reality and get some credibility again, I reckon she's gonna do. Or she's just so depressed from being wrong about Stannis and Jono that she's curling up. 
to die. She plays the scene with a lot of sadness, so maybe it's that simple, but let's wait and see. I reckon by mid-season, these discussions of Jono being dead or not will have closure. I hope no one ever tells Gendry that he lost his virginity to a senior citizen. Anyway, other things happened in this episode and I quiet liked the other things. Brienne getting Stark validation is great. Podrick's sword training in the off season is fucking fantastic. Ramsay didn't piss me off too much in this episode. Seeing Ramsay pushed and challenged to mature is far more captivating than seeing him go from one gimmicky game playing scene to the next. I liked the Cersei and Jamie scene. We all know the Dawn stuff was dodgy last season. At least the plot accelerated majorly there. Touching base with Arya was a good action moment. There's no mucking around with the chaos that's still going on in Marine. Jorah's disease is speeding up and it's kind of fun and nostalgic seeing Danny around the Dothraki folks again. The Temple of Widows sounds like death to me. After letting this episode bounce around in my brain, I think there's something else going on that I really like about it. Quite a few characters seem like they're going to revert to their vintage selves. Of course, they've been out in the world, they've grown, they've changed. Sansa and Theon remind each other who they were. Sansa has power as a Stark. Theon had some fighting skills once upon a time. He remembers that feeling. Brienne beside a Stark is where she was in season two. Jamie and Cersei consciously wanting to be fucking ruthless again is like becoming their vintage family orientated selves. Danny may learn or relearn some things from the Bizarro Season 1 Dothrakis. Tyrion and Varys are back in positions of influence. And if Jono is resurrected, he still technically died. So his watch at Castle Black ended and he'll have the freedom of choices he had back in Season 1. Arya is relearning to fight again like Season 1, just with the whole blindness obstacle. Oh, and of course, Melisandre reverts to her vintage self too. Thematically, you could argue that this episode called The Red Woman is about taking off your mask and being reminded of who you are. For those of you who are mainly interested in the Game of Thrones reviews, you can fund me for the season via Patreon. Just cancel it at the end if you want. I take no offence. If not, no worries. Mm -hmm.